let's take a look at the structure of carbonyl group, which is C double bond O. Right. The presence of such a structure is such that the carbonyl carbon is sp2 hybridized, and the 2p orbital of carbon overlaps with the 2p orbital of oxygen to form a pi bond. As oxygen is actually more electronegative than the carbon, you can see the pi electron cloud is polarized such that its electron cloud is weighted towards the oxygen, rendering the oxygen delta minus and the carbon delta plus. Hence, ketone and aldehyde is capable of undertaking nucleophilic substitution. Firstly, the carbon is actually delta plus, so it's able to actually attract a nucleophile. Thereafter, the carbon, which is sp2 hybridized, would become sp3 hybridized, hence nucleophilic addition. Let's take a look at the three chemical reactions that aldehyde and ketone can undertake. The first one is none other than nucleophilic addition. The second one is the reduction. And the last one is oxidation. Remember previously in the chapter in alcohol, we highlighted in the section where we discussed the oxidation of alcohol that ketone aldehyde sits between alcohol and carboxyl acid, where carboxyl acid is the most oxidized form while alcohol is the most reduced form. So therefore, aldehyde could be reduced to form one degree alcohol and ketone can be reduced to form two degree alcohol while aldehyde can be oxidized to form carboxy acid. Nucleophilic addition of aldehyde or ketone. Aldehyde or ketone can react with HCN to produce hydroxy nitrile. Hydroxy nitrile. So the reaction that takes place is nucleophilic addition since CN minus is the nucleophile and eventually the carbon, which is sp2, becomes sp3. In the first step, the CN minus attack the carbon, which is delta plus, and the pi electron cloud, which is weighted towards oxygen, is transferred to oxygen. Therefore, oxygen becomes O minus. Thereafter, the O minus could act as a base to accept a H plus or a proton from HCN to produce your hydroxy nitrile. And in the process, the CN minus is generated. So therefore, we can safely conclude that CN minus is a catalyst. So in this reaction, in terms of reaction mechanism, you can see that the, initially the EA is, EA1 is larger than EA2. So therefore, the first step is your slow step. The second step is thereafter the fast step. That's the reason why the EA the activation energy is lower. And in terms of the rate equation, it is a second order rate equation because in the slow step, it involves a CN minus and you also involve the aldehyde or the ketone. Let's now take a look at the condition. The condition for nucleophilic addition is that there is a need for trace amount of NaOH and NaCN. The reason is because HCN is a very weak acid and is, as a very weak acid, the concentration of CN minus is too low to initiate the initial step. So by adding NaOH or NaCN, you will find that you will be able to increase the concentration of CN minus as indicated by the respective two equations stated. And trace amount is needed because we know that in the reaction, CN minus is, is eventually being regenerated at the end. So CN minus is not being used up, it is a catalyst. Finally, the temperature of the reaction must be approximately 10 degrees Celsius there should be no heating. The reason is because in the presence of heating, the nitrile that's produced will be hydrolyzed by water molecules. In the exam, it is also important to note that the mixture of HCN as a reagent and NaCN as a catalyst actually forms a buffer. And to be precise, it is an acidic buffer solution where HCN is the acid and it can actually remove your OH- minus, while your CN- minus is the salt produced from the acid and you can remove H+. Therefore, it's not uncommon for this, for nucleophilic addition to be linked in exam to buffer calculations and as well as to kinetics, where the order of reactions have to be derived given from graphical data or tabulated data. Finally, HCN is a blood agent in chemical warfare. Therefore, it's unlikely to be used in the lab. The actual reagent that is used is your H2SO4 and your NACN. Because with H2SO4 and NaCN, NaCN could actually produce a CN minus in the initial start of the reaction, while the H plus will be needed in the subsequent step. So therefore, the reactions can only occur when the medium is acidic. 
However, when if H2SO4 and NACN is used, then one need to note that both of them are in fact reagents. Unlike earlier, where HCN is the reagent, while the case of NaOH and NACN is a catalyst. So let's take a look at this example. So in this example that we have, you have two, in the case of ketone, you have two electron releasing alkyl group. So therefore, the carbon will now become less delta plus relative to actually your aldehyde, which only have one electron releasing group. So we expect the carbon here to be more delta plus. So therefore, because of this, the carbon in the carbonyl group is more susceptible to nucleophile attack in aldehyde. The next factor to look at is when the nucleophile is bonded to the carbon, if the carbon in carbonyl group becomes more crowded. And in the case of ketone, definitely it will be more crowded since there are two alkyl groups relative to actually aldehyde, which only have one alkyl group and the other one is a hydrogen. So given that the carbon of the carbonyl group in ketone is more crowded, it will be less susceptible to a nucleophile attack due to steric hindrance, or you can mention that the structure is sterically less stable when carbon becomes sp3 and is bonded to four different groups. Hence, because of this, it will be easier for aldehyde to undertake nucleophilic addition relative to your ketone. And hence, you can see that the ease of nucleophilic addition is as such. It will be easier with methanol going on to actually going on to your aliphatic aldehyde, then your ketone, and then this is your benzaldehyde. The AR means there's actually a benzene ring. So one need to uh, understand that the, the steric factor whereby there's greater crowding is actually a dominant factor. Finally, it is important to take note that in the nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound, it is possible for a chiral carbon to be produced thereafter. And more importantly, the reacting mixture is a racemic mixture. And as you get equal amount of enantiomers, why is that so? Let's take a look at this example. So in the case of uh, ethanol that undergoes nucleophilic addition, the CN minus have 50 equal probability of going from the top or below, given the fact that this carbon is sp2 and therefore trigonal planar. Meaning to say there's equal probability. So in this case, given that 50% could actually go to the top and 50% goes to below, will be a racemic mixture, which means it is optically inactive. So in the exam, there are four scenarios that compound undertake organic chemical reactions that end up with a racemic mixture. The first one, as per discussed and commonly tested at A-level, is your nucleophilic addition. So the second reaction where you produce a racemic mixture is in the nucleophilic substitution of halogenyl alkane, and the reaction mechanism has to be SM1. So specifically, we are talking about a third degree halogenyl alkane. So let us take a look at the example. In this example that we have, the OH- also have equal probability of going to the top and below, and be mindful that the carbocation is carbon is a sp2, which means it's trigonal planar, and therefore OH- have equal probability of going from the top or below of the, of the planar structures, and thereby creating a racemic mixture, and hence the reaction mixture is optically inactive. The third example is electrophilic addition of alkene. In the electrophilic addition of alkene with aqueous HBr or HBr, for example. In the second step, a carbocation with a charge of C plus is also being produced. And with respect to the carbon, when we respect to the C plus, it is sp2. And therefore, Br minus have 50% probability of going to the top and below, which means it will produce a racemic mixture and hence is optically inactive. One needs to note, take note that in this example, the hydrogen would have to go to this carbon in order that it can actually produce a carbocation that is more stable as it is bonded to more alkyl groups, which are electron releasing. The final example that is yet to be tested at the A-level or asked at the A-level is the radical substitution of a butane. Say, for example, in this case, there's a radical substitution of a butane in the presence of your halogen radicals. You will find that in this case, the radical is trigonal planar, but it also can be flexed in both directions, which means that there's also a equal probability of going from the top and below for the bromine radicals. And hence, because of that, you will also be able to produce a racemic mixture that ends up as being optically inactive as well. 